Hello and welcome to another Comedian's Interview for my blog and podcast, The Rich Comic Life. My name is Richard Gill and my blog describes my experiences of watching well over 1,000 comedians for nearly 50 years. I'm delighted to welcome my guest today, it's Mr. Logan Murray. Yeah! Um, there's no autographs. Uh, hello, my friend, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks thanks for asking me on, Rich. It's my pleasure. I've, I, I'm, I'm delighted to have you as a guest. Uh, uh, yeah. Is everything all right? You're, everything okay? Yeah, I mean, I'm just sort of gearing up for... Um, I, I'm, I've got some summer workshops coming up abroad, so right. I'm, I'm just sort of unpacking my bikini and <laughs> thinking I'll get my legs waxed. Good yeah. on you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, it is well, show business, isn't it? Exactly. You know? yes. yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, well I'm, I'm delighted you're my, my guest. Uh, um, and now, um, we're going to have a chat about your comedy career. Yeah. And uh, the first question is, um, how did you become a comedian in the first place? Why bother? Uh, <laughs> well, you sound like my mother. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, I mean, uh, well, it's, there's a sort of a longish version of it. I mean, the short version is it, w it was a, a mistake. Wow, um, I don't well, I doubt that. No, honestly, it was. Uh, how far back shall I go? Right, well, uh, I mean, feel free to just cut this out all out if it's if it's not. <laughs> Seriously, because it's just... Anyway, so um, I thought when I was at school, I couldn't really... I wasn't I wasn't good for anything. I, di I, did, um, I did art and... Uh, right. I did um, I did a couple of other A levels, but I, I didn't really fancy doing anything. Also, I thought I'll go to art college because my original thought was going to be um, a, a graphic illustrator. I think it would have been a terrible graphic illustrator, but never mind. That's what I thought I wanted to be because <laughs> you don't know when you're eighteen, nineteen. You know, you just go, Ooh, "We're good at, we'll do that." And um, anyway, this is the short <laughs> version. Bear in mind, this is the short version. Please, please, so, do. Okay. it's great. So, all right, so. Um, <laughs> So this is uh, 1979, and um, uh, I, I realised that being graphic illustrator was quite hard work. You had to, you know, really, it wasn't like, you know, when you're at school and you just paint or you sculpt and that's it. So um, it was quite hard work. So I pushed more into fine art, right, like, like oil painting and stuff like that. And I thought, well, that's quite hard as well. Um, so I started getting into stuff that we would now call um, installation work. You know, like, you, you know, but, you know, but at the time we called it um, performance art. And uh, and I was looking around for degrees because to get into uni then, because we got grants in those days as well. So uh, to get into uni, you mm. had to have uh, uh, one year foundation course in art, right. uh, in, art in local art college, plus two A-levels. Anyway, I signed up for this course called performance arts um, and I signed up for the wrong course. Basically, it was drama, dance and music. Which I had no plan on doing. <laughs> uh, so I was, I was wandering around with the portfolio for the first, you know, semester, going, well, why does it want me to wear footless tights? You know, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I got sucked into that and I quite liked it. So I finished, uh, I finished my first degree and they said, um, some mates of mine who were musicians said they wanted somebody to front uh their group and their group had a cellist and two opera singers in and they just wanted somebody they were too embarrassed to introduce the songs so they wanted me so right you know, mass massive ego low self-esteem i thought great i can do this job um <laughs> and that was just about the time that um alternative cabaret was starting wow the, so they'd be about 83 84 that couldn't be better yeah yeah so we i was pushing us more and more towards doing gigs like king's head crouch end or Ball and Banana or yeah. Jonglers when it was yeah. just one venue and stuff like that. And we were, we were, we went down quite well. I mean, you know, and then one day they couldn't make a, a gig and I spoke to um, uh, the bloke around the Banana Comedy Club and they made me call to cancel a gig and he was quite rightly pissed off at me. Uh, go, this is really unprofessional. I'm going, oh, no, really. It's a but, <laughs> uh, but if it's any, I mean, I know we're doing a 15 minute slot um, all I can do is I can come down and try and fill the time with some of my stupid poetry and he went ah no you're all right mate I don't really like poetry then he uh, called back and he said well somebody saw your jongles and they thought the poetry was quite funny so do you want to come down 
So I did the gig and he said, that's brilliant. Um, I'll pay you uh, next time. And I thought, well, that's going a lot further than splitting it seven ways with the band members. So, yeah. I start, so that was my first solo gig. And then... That just was my next more question. More. <laughs> yeah. And, and then what happened was, because no, there were only about three or four stand-ups at the time. There's Jeremy mm. Hardy. Um, uh, I mean, Jerry Sadowitz was a little bit later. Mark Steele. Um, uh, a couple of others who are really good, but are now doing other things. Yeah. Uh, and the rest of us were just probably remember just messing around doing really weird music hall type acts or, you know, do you, do you remember the Iceman? Very much so. Yeah. yeah. He, so like, he, he yeah. would go on stage and melt a block of ice. Yeah. Yeah. In various different <laughs> ways. <laughs> You know, so and, and, uh, you yeah, know, they saw, I mean, and, that is so unique. It's brilliant, um, and 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 this is why um, you uh, you were there at the time because of the experience of it all. It's just getting the experience to get up on yeah. stage and do it and have a yeah. go. Yeah. And, uh, um, so so when you had your first ever gig. Did you then um, go around pubs with a friend doing five minutes with your friend sitting in the audience? Was that no, no, it was nothing like that then. No. It was um, there was no there, there was no uh, I think I'm, I think this is a question asked. There was no there was no sort of open spot ghetto where you know no, you had to bring no. an audience. It was just like there was this golden <laughs> period where they'd phone you. Wow, and, and, they, and they you know you you know you could negotiate your fee and all that sort of thing so so was that um i i used to get time out magazine yeah. years and years ago and they used to have the little telephone numbers for you to ring that's what you do your, that's how you that's how you did it you would yeah yeah you would work work away ringing round yeah. seeing who was free wow but it wasn't that bad because once you you know there was there was a weird bit at the beginning where you'd be in at quite a big club and yeah. someone else would be going, well, I've never heard of you. You're doing five minutes for nothing. And you, you have to really <laughs> go to one side. I remember Simon Bly saying to me one time years ago, you know, you just got to jump through the hoops, haven't you? You know, it's just there. You, you just got to do what they are. Just smile, keep, grin, yeah, 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 do yeah, the work until they realise they need you. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, so uh, you go through the... Uh, my philosophy was, this would be very boring for your listeners, but my philosophy was, you'd, you, I'd, pick up the, I'd pick up the phone, um tuesday wednesday and thursday yeah. and if i got a gig on tuesday brilliant because sometimes it might be two gigs at two different venues from yeah, one yeah. promoter you know so as long as i got four gigs between tuesday and thursday because you don't want to do on friday because they usually had club nights themselves then so they the, the time to phone would be between tuesday wednesday and thursday but i can't i sound like at this point, you'd be moving away from the bus stop, wouldn't you? If it was I'm loving it, and my right. will. But, I'm loving it. Keep going. The, <laughs> so look at your calendar. You look at your calendar, uh, or your, you know, your workbook, and um, six months ahead, it's really, really empty. Yeah. But every week coming up, there are always four gigs. You know, so so it was like any self-employed person. In the short term, you knew that there was food on the table. You know, uh, so yeah, so that's. It, well, I mean, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do this as a job if it was, if it took a lot of admin or it was really hard. I think, <laughs> well, yeah, I think a lot of us chose this job because, you know, it was this or prison. You know, we couldn't really do it. <laughs> what's, yeah. what's fascinating for me is that um, my background is admin, my background's business. I, uh, my, my brother makes adverts for the television. Yeah. He he's very artistic and and uh, has been doing advertising for years. But I went to Stoke on Trent, my home city's Carlisle. I went to Stoke on Trent. I did business studies there. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, however, um, my first ever gig was Les Dawson on holiday with my mum and dad and brother, age seven, at Scarborough. Oh. On I'm very I'm very jealous. I'd and I and I and I wrote that down. And then yeah. the next year we saw Tommy Cooper. Yeah, that, well, that was incredible. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. for it. And every gig I, I wrote down, I, I'm one for writing great long lists. Yeah, yeah. So I've yeah. got a spreadsheet of absolutely every single act I've ever seen. Yeah, which is extraordinary. 
and uh, that's how the blog started. My my it's... friend my friend uh, runs a business in Carlisle, and she said, yeah. she's crying out for a blog." And yeah, I, yeah. I basically said, "What's a blog?" Because <laughs> yeah. I because I'd written a I'd written it as a book. Yeah. And um, uh, um, the blog is brilliant because it's never ending. I can keep yeah. doing it yeah. forever more. And then and then the podcast started. So um, to support such a worthwhile cause as um, laughter, tr mm -hmm. comedians trying to make folk laugh. What is not to love about that? You know, and yeah, it, yeah. Because it was very sadly decimated in the um, during COVID and everything. But thank God it's back because yeah, yeah. There's, there's there's nothing better for me than to to go out on a on a Saturday night and just sit there and of the moment yeah. and just think, yeah. make me laugh. And, and yeah, yeah. you're very, very good at that. You're very open with your comedy. You, you When you get an audience, you, you you say, right, I'm not, basically you're saying, I'm not leaving until I make this audience laugh. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And you do, and, 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 and once you do, you can then say whatever you like. It's fascinating. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm moving on to this. Have you got any specific themes that you like to talk about on stage? How do you work out what you're going to say? Um, well, I, I think I think my my conscious brain thinks it wants to do this, that, and the other. Yeah. And then then my unconscious brain goes down a different path. So you know, when you're with pen and <laughs> but I th honestly, it's true. When you're with pen and paper, you think, "Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that," and then. <laughs> it comes out slightly different if i look back um certainly the past 20 years uh most of my stuff a lot the, a lot of my set is about uh it's very it's very nihilistic it's very sort of uh, not in a not in an edge lord sort of way it's just yeah. saying it's just addressing the uh, hopefully funnily you know the, the human condition there's no god we all die alone it's all been a pointless waste of time but but there's, you know, let's have a laugh along the way. <laughs> so, uh, but so, like, if you had to boil, if you, because because I do my, I, you know, this is separate from the character act that I do as well. So, yeah, so if you, if I'm going to I'm going to move on to that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. right. But if it, if it was me, he's, he's even more bitter. But um, <laughs> but if it was me, then what I like to do is um, I'll I like to seduce the. I mean, if you talk to a different comedian, they give you a different point of view. But for me, I like to seduce an audience into their my point of view so i'll start off with um like you're at a bus stop you you know you don't go in heavy do you you'll do oh, no, no, buses over. <laughs> so, and then you'll go my wife left me the cow 10 minutes in, then, no come back <laughs> um uh, so so the first few is just talking it's not it, it's just my material's very anodyne and you know aren't relationships it's wonderful blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all life all life is lovely and then once the, i've seduced the audience to my point of view then the second half is uh however uh and then it's going for the crash and burn for the next yeah. 17 minutes of uh if the pointlessness of but but you know hopefully in the funny my philosophy is we all pay taxes we all die yes so you might as well have a laugh about it exactly you know? i i could not agree one million percent more yeah, yeah. I, i'm so I'm, I'm so with you on that how do you remember all your routines when you're on stage do you have a way of remembering them uh do you have, if it, do you have notes well, on after COVID, or notebooks or anything no not not particular i mean there's enough um there's enough sort of i don't know if i've got any uh there's enough recordings of stuff I've done to sort of, because it's good to record yourself every gig. Yeah. For an, just in case you come up with anything new. Yeah. You know, or or uh, you can test out a new idea. Um, but they tend to get ditched after a while. So I think as long as there's um, organically, there's maybe 40 to 50 minutes of stuff, which is in my head for me, and maybe another 40, 50 minutes in my head for Ron. The, right. the character act then yeah. then that's okay but but it i always think it's not uh, for learning material it, it it's um it's like when you it's not like learning king lear it's not like learning somebody else's lines you know what i mean so you know if you're if you're doing material about your dog being sick on the carpet you're not you're not in material you're just talking about it at a party 
you know that that funny story about the dog you know the dog at the chicken and you know, just <laughs> everywhere you know what a mess and you've told it a couple of times and you know the you've sort of scored it through you, and you're not doing it word for word you'd be mortified if anybody said oh rich you said that word mortified before, didn't you? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so, yeah. but you know, you've scored it through. And I always think to, um, that's what I tell new comics as well, is um, you know you, you you know your reactions because they're your reactions. So then all you have to remember is the first thought and then let everything come at that. You will forget stuff and you will go off on a tangent, but we're all, as human beings, we're all clever enough to come up with different stuff, if you know, if we, if we completely blank. It's it's okay. it's um excuse me it's um funny that you say that because uh, other than this blog, the most creative thing I've ever done was write a play and perform yeah. a play, and uh, originally it was going to be for the Edinburgh Fringe. It might well still be, but mm -hmm. me and my mate put it on for Comic Relief, and mm -hmm. and it got um, we got over two grand for it. it this is years ago. Mm -hmm. The play is called The Applicant, and it's basically about me who comes down from from Carlisle to London. I've never had a job interview and I've got a successful girlfriend who is very um, big in the um, uh, job world. Mm -hmm. So I get, I am the interviewee and my mate uh, played all the interviewers, all the different characters of the interviewers. So there's only two of us, he's really yeah. Yeah. It was basically monologue, then interview, then monologue, then interview. And, and the monologue was got from me sitting nervously waiting to be interviewed and starting chatting to the audience. Now I um, wrote this and we performed this for, it must have been, uh, rehearsed it for about 10 weeks. And the first night, the first ever monologue, I ran out. I was like a rabbit in headlights and I forgot the monologue. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And it's and it's fascinating when you said it's not King Lear because um, uh, uh, I can imagine oh, well you've well you've touched on it that um, uh, bec be because you're a comedian as opposed to an actor you've got the crowd to play off yeah yeah and steer it back around whereas you have to try and remember lines to 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 get back into the play well I think I think when you're doing um when you're doing a, a play or you're writing a play or you're performing in a play or a sitcom or a, yeah. like that, a, a lot of other art forms you're creating this artifact here's a song that i wrote here's a poem i wrote yeah. this is a thing i've done and you're sort of presenting that to the audience this is here we are you know on the battlements of denmark and my name's hamlet you know whatever you're doing um whereas i think stand-up's not like that i think stand-up is you having a conversation it's just you're the only one talking if it's a good evening that sometimes they talk back but that's fine they're allowed to talk back you know that's that's yeah. part of the process and there's no it's very hard to think of any other performance arts that that allow that so if you're on stage by yourself and it's not you don't have to worry about your mate coming on in the scene in three minutes time and that leading to something that happens in the second half and all that then you have a lot more freedom in the in the area that you're playing in than if you have to think oh god Bloke's going to come in three minutes and tell me that Lady Macbeth's killed herself. You know, <laughs> I, can't, I can't start juggling. It felt like you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's a complete different. It's, I say it's it's because it's it's like the same way as if, if you were singing a song and you've got the lyrics. Yeah, you know, but if you're, you know, we all go through. It's just, it's very trite what I was about to say, but you know, we all go through life without a script, and yet we seem to entertain each other quite a lot mm, mm. you know um that's a very good analogy yeah but yeah. so i think that basically you know i know i know what my position is on uh say my two divorces i know i know what reactions that, that, that i've got out of you know if i'm doing any material about them, which i'm not really these days because i'm <laughs> over it um <laughs> but, um but, you know, so I know the reality, I know what my take, uh, you know, on, you, you know, you know your take on that, that time you were dissed in Greg's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, so, you know what I mean? So it's like, you, you know your reaction shot to it. Um, and that leads to the second, which isn't, I'm, oh God, I've seen some terrible daytime television. And, um, 
years and years ago, back in the, I think it was 90s, early 90s. And Alan, Te- Alan Teachmarsh asked that in Mortal Kombat, where do you get your ideas from? It's like, <laughs> um, life, you know, what can you say to that? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Pat is the devil. Yeah. No, 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 but it's, it's an impossible question to answer. But, you know, whatever, I, know what I, you think, I think whatever, whatever demons are riding you at the moment, that's the thing that fuels yeah. your creativity. You know, so uh, and that's a demon. I mean, D A E M. So it's like whatever things firing up. It doesn't have to be a negative thing. It's just it's just sometimes good, yeah, uh, to let the negative things uh, rather than suppressing them in comedy, rather than suppressing them, you go well, never mind. We're just going to is is the comic energy to play. Well, what if? What's the worst thing that could happen? You know, what's I, the worst? I, just go through the center of it. Yeah. I always say to comedians who've been on here, I can imagine um, if they have a bad gig, I think I think they all have to have a bad gig to become a better yeah, comedian. Yeah. Because it's all, again, it's all down to experience. Yeah, yeah. It's the old Sarah Millican adage of um, when you wake up by 10 o'clock the next day, move on, forget it. Yeah. It's happened the yeah. night before. It's fascinating. It, it, I, 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 I don't know if you had Frank Skinner on, but I think he said one time, it was a lovely aphorism, uh, you know, you're only as good as your next gig. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and it's like, uh, it, it, everything else is just metaphorical chip paper, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, yeah. What a quote that is. <laughs> but, you, but you're absolutely yeah, right. You, only, you know, you learn much more from, a, I'm, yeah. I'm very worried if I did, um, if I did a, a, a string of, gigs where people are liking me and I maybe occasionally get an encore yeah, because yeah. I can only think that's going to make me flabby you know and the, it will be a, a, um, a bad gig keeps you honed up I have a I have a uh, uh, if there is a criticism with my blog it's that it's that I like everything mm-hmm. and uh, the fact the way I look at it is I'm in the audience having the best time and I think my passion and enthusiasm is shining through when I write mm-hmm. about all the experiences. Because mm-hmm. it's all about me and the audience, really. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, um, everybody saw sometimes, you know, you, you, you like everybody, but, uh, but I counterbalance that because if nothing else, I give them the benefit of the doubt of having a yeah. goal. But, I, but, but you can tell because I sit in the, I never heckle, but I sit in the audience in silence instead yeah. of laughing out loud. Cause but that, I mean, that, that's, what, yeah, that's, what I try and, that's what I try and do when I compare because you know, <laughs> we've all died. We've all died. So if somebody has a bad, I, I like Malcolm Hardy was, uh, yeah. you know, he'd have somebody on and they died the death and he could, he could be, well, that's them, they're crap. Or, um, but sometimes he'd go, he'd say to the audience, you're wrong. They're brilliant act. Just, yeah, you didn't you didn't like them this evening. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. They could be having a bad night. Yeah, the next yeah. day it could be brilliant. Um, this, just to say, just to bore, bore you, there was um, you. I did on. one gig. I, I did a gig at Farnham Donkeys years ago. Yeah, and uh, in my I was a bit crap, but in my defence, I was between. It was a night of music, and I think music energy is different from comedy energy. Yeah. So you know, you you, you know, if you're doing a, if you're doing a mixed evening. Um, if it was up to me, I'd put comedy on first, then the music on afterwards, because it, it's a different part of your brain, I think. Yeah, um, very much so. So, But anyway, so I went down lacklustre at this uh, gig, and these art students at Farnham Art College, these art students took it upon themselves to sit me down and tell me exactly how shit I was and why <laughs> oh, I was. Oh, no! And uh, why oh. should be ashamed of myself. <laughs> You see that bloke there? He's just got, he's our mate. He's just got into drama college. He's going to be much more successful than you. And the bloke's going to Wow. And they went, well, oh. they gritted teeth and all that, you know, uh, went back. Then about three years later, I was doing a club in London. And again, died on my ass. But in my defense, it was, uh, I got asked to do a GAY club. Right. And um, there was, there was no, there was no stage. There was no, uh, yeah, what, what it was, they just put me on a podium with a microphone in a corridor, and on the other side of the corridor was a glass uh, window with underneath Gain, uh, Gloria Gaynor just belting out uh, all the cover <laughs> versions, right? 
And people are wandering around just going, what's this lunatic doing there? <laughs> and, and I died on my ass. And I'm looking through the crowd for any friendly faces. And it's the same four people from Farnham. Wow. Oh, no. Yeah, no way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how unlucky yeah, well, are you? Uh, yeah, no, but I mean, you know, how, <laughs> how many gigs that are like? But, you know, for those four people, they're convinced. Oh, no. I, 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 some, I sometimes ask, uh, what, what's the comedian's favourite and worst gig? And I think that must go up there. It's one of the worst. Oh, no, I've got better ones than that. To, the, to yeah. say what they said to you, that's, yeah. that's disgraceful. But the tr the tr it's great getting comics talking about bad gigs. Um, it's, you know, when you're in the green room and there's usually newish comics. Yeah. And they keep on talking about how oh, they stormed it and it was brilliant and they, you know, they slayed the audience. You can see all the old lags just going, right, let me line up some death stories just to, because you know what, you know, <laughs> nobody wants to be around those sociopathic people who go, how are you doing, Rich? You all right? Yeah, I'm very well. I've just landed a three deal contract with, who wants to, you know, like, <laughs> get out, you narcissist. So, um, so yeah, so there's me and some old, old lags, uh, you know, we will start just lining up deaths because they're much funnier stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh yeah, um, uh, uh, one of one of the early ones for me. Um, another holiday, the last holiday we went on, uh, um, when I was ten, we went to Torquay, and uh, we went uh, um, uh, we went to see Tom O'Connor of all people. Oh yeah, and he walked on typical seventies uh, club comedian walked on, did his patter, and uh, he was getting laughs. But um, I, for some reason, I belly laughed at him. Ha! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it actually threw him. He walked off stage, came back on, adjusted his tie and carried on. And I'm thinking, <laughs> was that me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and of course, wherever I go now, <laughs> it's like, oh, Rich is in with a laugh. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the, f the first time I went to the comedy store in 1988, when I first came to London, on the bill was Richard Morton, who's been on this, Linda yeah. Smith, God bless her, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Phil Jupiter's, um, Steve Gribbin, who's done yeah, this, yeah. and top of the bill was somebody called Charles Fleischer, who was oh, yeah. heard of again, but he went yeah. on to re to be the voice of Roger Rabbit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I might have been there the same night. No, I don't know if it was 88, but I remember, I definitely remember seeing Charles Fleischer. Yeah, the yeah, comedy, yeah. Mad the, act. Comedy Absolutely star. mad act. Yeah, 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 very much. That's how it, that's how it, that's how it made. But sorry, I, I, I crave, did that was there a death involved in that, or they just all heard you laugh? No, 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 it, no, it, no. It was literally who is this person, you know? And and yeah, now yeah. wherever I go, it's like yeah. it, it, it's wonderful because like oh, we're gonna have a great night because Rich is in, and I'm yeah. like, well, yeah, but you've got to be funny. <laughs> Did you, did you ever see, yeah. um, did Charles Fleischer get an encore the night? Before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The night, because it was, because it, 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 it was like a man of a million yeah. voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And That's it, what I loved yeah. about his, his encore. It was just like, it was just like um, a Looney Tunes cartoon yeah. mixed with Salvador Dali. And it made no yeah. sense. <laughs> That's but exactly we were all it. laughing. You know, yeah. it was going, all this stuff. Very much hands. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, 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 that, that was a highlight for me. And it was one of the first times I came down to London. Yeah. And uh, of course, the comedy store I absolutely yeah. love. And I still go to this day. It's sort of yeah, yeah. Awesome, so iconic. Yeah. Um, when you're on stage, do you suffer from any nerves? And uh, if so, how do you cope with them? Or have you well, ever had any nerves? Unfortunately not. Um, and I think, I think I'd be a better performer. I mean, I must, on some degree, there must be a little tiny bit of adrenaline that gets secretive when I'm on stage because it you know otherwise that's one of the perks of the job you know you it's such a lovely drug adrenaline yeah um but it's not like the early days but, you know because I've got to cast my mind back almost 40 years to think about that now um and also I was slightly I remember um Pete Graham and Hugh Thomas used to run the yeah King Ted Crouch and together and when they set up, we, we got um, a year's residency, this weird musical group I was in. They had a wow, residency. I've probably seen that. Yeah, right. So we, I used uh, to go years ago. Well, we were, we yeah. were, uh, this is the first year it was set up. So that would be, this must have been 84. Eight. This was. Yeah. Um, but, but the point is with that, if I remember going on stage with that throb in my neck thinking, you know, that massive first night, <laughs> Jesus Christ, what are they going to do? But, um, <laughs> 
but because we we had the they did really beautiful serious minimalist music as yeah. well as some really stupid they had one tra one song called last train to oak wood that was just like <laughs> violins and it was just brilliant really fast you know sort of thing you expect at a, a some sort of roma wedding you know da, 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 all this sort of stuff it's fantastic so um any time that i went in that year's residency when i felt like i'm out on a limb i could just introduce the next song so that was a very gentle introduction into yeah, yeah. coping very with good. adrenaline yeah but, i mean but the bad side of that so now i just feel like sometimes like i'm like i'm going on with the mug of cocoa you know <laughs> i really do but that well, it's all experience it's, as a... yeah, but, <laughs> well, if something goes horribly wrong then i'm screwed right because it's it's like i'm not i have to sort of go from naught to 60 to you know to, to <laughs> dodge the spear or whatever you know, <laughs> been thrown at me so i think adrenaline it's nice yeah it's nice to have that sharpness to be have your eyes flashing your cheeks you know flushed it, you know to be to be as a ridiculous phrase but to be working at 110 percent you know and that that person you are on stage then that's the person that the audience fall in love with. They, that's yeah, the yeah, person. They'll, they'll buy so, you yeah. a drink. They see you at your best. You sort of cubed, um, and then then they buy you a drink, and they have to deal with the you that goes, "Oh, thank you very much." I'm glad you... <laughs> then you know what time the night bus is. So, oh, hopefully, yeah. you know it's like, what, what a fall from grace that is. You know, it's, but it, it's wonderful that you had the residency at the, at the King's Head downstairs, the King's Head. Um, I, I very recently went to the 40th anniversary show of it yeah. and I was sitting in the front row and I know Al Murray, I know yeah. Nick Helm and I know Phil Nickel and yeah. they were all on the bill yeah. and uh, I was the target for the night. <laughs> Al, Al Murray just poured beer all over me, I, I, yeah. I, 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 you know, he's <laughs> just one of the best. But it was fantastic to see um, dear old Hugh Thomas yeah to retirement he was brilliant that yeah night. he is still i mean oh, he's, he's, and he's, he's still he, he was so so good i'm hoping he's going to come on here i have well, you must, you must persuade him oh very much so i have i have um uh recently interviewed peter graham and, and yeah. i know him well and he was wonderful uh um sitting in his little room that that room is a yeah, yeah. of the club where they all yeah, yeah. The Indians go in and yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's just a wonderful place i my my brother lived in Stoke Newington and I lived um, with him for three or four years and I used to love going through to Crouch End and uh, well, it was I, hadn't the... been, I hadn't been for like 20 years yeah have that but, there but you asked any and then of course I saw I saw comics go from uh, you know doing an open a free mm -hmm. open spot to being a headline act yeah you know on the Sunday night yeah. which was the big night before it yeah, yeah. Saturday night yeah, um, I um, I I remember clearly watching very early gigs from Jeff Green, who I yeah, love, yeah. and also Harry Hill. He yeah. st still holds to this day the best yeah. opening line I've ever heard. He brushed past me at the King's Head. He was late, jumped up on the stage, and he went, "Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really sorry. I'm I'm late this evening. I had to have a testicle brought down, and got a laugh. And then he went from Derby." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, 25 yeah. years later, when I met him for the first yeah. time, I told him this, and he went, Richie said, I still tell that. <laughs> <laughs> He's an absolute genius. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, he... Let us move on. Yeah. You have performed a character called Ronnie Rigsby on stage many yeah. a time. Please tell me about him and how did he come about? Oh, I'm so sorry to give you all these long-winded well. Yeah, please do. Um, it's great. All right. So uh, <laughs> I was doing the lovely thing. About, the lovely thing about doing stand-up is uh, if they if people come along to your gig and they think, oh, you can do stand-up, then maybe you can present or maybe you know, can you act? Well, I can act myself. So okay, we'll do these three lines, and that will you know, can you present or can you write for somebody else? So. There's all these opportunities that come your way. And um, one of those opportunities, I, did, I, I ended up doing lots of um, lots of cartoon voice characters at one time. Um, I'm very, I'm very my, my thing I'm very proud of, I did all the voices for a version of a Dennis the Menace and Nasha show. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. You but it was that a, every but, week? 
Yeah, but it's not. It's, it wasn't an animated thing. It was all done like Muppets. It sounds crap, but it was. It was really for its time. It's really good. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, go. Oh, I did all the voices, but the downside was they were so cheap. They only wanted one voice artist, so they got me. But I really enjoyed it as a job. That led to something else. And one of those jobs was um, uh, a children's ITV game show. Right. Uh, do you remember Nightmare? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was made by the same company, but it was. Uh, it was set in cyberspace. It's called Virtually Impossible. And I did the voice for this electronically um, enhanced, it was basically a computer fish. It was a fish, <laughs> right? And, and to cut a long story short, this is the short version. We went to uh, the producer, said, Darla, I've booked us for an animation festival in Cannes. Does anybody fancy it? And we went, yeah. Yeah, went to Cannes, and basically he booked us in for the wrong festival. No. So he, yeah, he booked us in for um, a festival ex ex exclusively for CD ROMs, like Encyclopedia Britannica and things like that. So we were all, everyone was bored out of their minds. All the people who were the, even there at the right festival hated it. Oh, God, so <laughs> Britannia, Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, one of the guys there, he gave me. Um, it was revolutionary at the time, but it was a screen with an animation. It was a bald bloke little moustache and a bow tie and you spoke into the microphone and his mouth moved which was like never is like magic then and he pressed the button his head went that way pressed the button he went that way and he, he could do that with his eyebrows and he gave you the microphone he said you want to muck around with this for a bit uh and uh he said what's your name and i said my name is ronnie bixby and i am celebrating 58 years in showbiz today you know this <laughs> and, and then I, they couldn't get me off it they couldn't. I was like, for the next three days, I was no, no, let's do more. And there was, and people coming around and they were having a laugh. And I was, I made it a point of never doing the same thing twice. I wanted to just keep on riffing, you know. And I loved it so much. And I thought there must be something I can do with that. So, so I started blagging the equipment off the, uh, the computer equipment off the guy who designed the software. Yeah. Uh, and, and I was lugging that to various gigs. And then my girlfriend, who was another comedian. My girlfriend at the time, she said, why don't you just dress up, you silly bugger? <laughs> so I went, oh, yeah, I could do that. So I started dressing up as the old man. <laughs> um, and, then, and then I've sort of inveigled my way into emceeing at the Fortnite Club in Islington, uh, which went on for about 25, 30 years. And then everything else that came out of me performing Ronnie Rigsby, um, sort of had its had its genesis there but and and i've got to say the fortnight club you know as you'll know this but some of you yeah you know, viewers and listeners might not um you know it was it was one of the few clubs of its time that and every other monday uh there were the two sister clubs there was the only place where established comedians could try out new ideas right i mean of course we could try out new ideas on the night um but we go for a pizza afterwards. It was quite nice to see people socially, you know. So, yeah, yeah. So it was a brilliant thing to do. Um, and and you got to see everybody. No, I, you <laughs> wouldn't see somebody for six months, and then you'd see them there, or you'd see somebody you'd never met before. Um, that some TV producer talked them into doing it. You know, yeah. trying to prepare material for a, a series. Um, so literally everyone played that club. That's um, fantastic. And, yeah, and it was it was a really and it, it had, the thing about it is as well it had such a buzz for a while. You know, we, we used to get um, it was like because it was for the internet as well, but it was like a cool. It was the thing that you know people in oh, I can't remember Blur people from Blur came along, <laughs> and, you know, and, and and because this was a cool thing to do. And, yeah, 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 that's brilliant. And one of the other wow. nights involved in that same venue, which was it was the Market Tavern, um, I think it was the Market Tavern in Islington. Uh, one of the other nights was set up was um, Simon Munnery's Club Zarathustra. Oh, brilliant! So, so the whole venue had this really. I remember Joe Brand, uh, Jim McCarver, and um, Mark Lamar put a band together. Wow! One week. So, so it was just. It was just great just seeing. That's the magic of it, seeing it all, seeing it all happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, what was it like working with Jerry Sadowitz in the show Bib and Bob? Tell me about that. It was really, it was, 
ninety uh, percent of it was really good fun, and um, and the the shows themselves are a delight. Uh, Jerry is an incredibly generous performer and also an incredibly generous writer. You know, I, I mean, especially Bib and Bob kept on going. You know, basically it started off. Uh, well, I'll tell you this in a second. But I didn't want to forget my thread. So. Um, a few years later, he had a series on Channel 5, Geriatric. Yeah. It was like magic and comedy. And and he asked me to be one of the regulars on it. And he wrote some really, he, you know, we'd do a sketch and he'd be giving me, he'd be doing all the straight line feeds and be giving me a chance to do all these really stupid things. So, you know, a more, despite w what people might think of him, a, 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 a lovely man. Yeah, B, I've no uh, idea. Yeah, but also be a really generous writer with the jokes, you know, like yeah, uh, yeah. just in the business of making his, my case, uh, I can't speak for anybody else, but making his comedy partners look better, you know? So, so Bib and Bob started, um, I don't go, he might get him on the show one time, I don't want to, but the short version is, and again, oh, short version of this is, um, he'd fallen out massively, uh, fallen out of love with stand-up and right. also uh had a massive falling out with um the people who were managing them at the time um and he was so it's typical uh what well, it was typical jerry but it's very you know jerry right all or nothing and the nothing is i'm walking away from all this yeah right and then uh so he didn't do anything he just worked in the magic shop that were um for a few years um, making a living that way um, and he was a huge name at the time you know massive but it's like no nope, yeah not anything to do with that um, and then we were mucking around a bit and uh, I think he was the one who suggested first that we should do some of these stupid things and really low uh, low risk gigs you know like uh, really I can't think what the equivalent would be now but um, you know, it'd be like doing something at Comedy Virgins, right. like Cavendish in, yes, in, yeah, in yeah. Stockwell. Yeah, somewhere where there's no expectation. We're just, yeah. and, and it, we had a great time doing it. It was just, I think Jerry was the one who said it's like a real sort of two fingers to the industry because we were seeing this industry rise at the time. The whole of, of alternative comedy came out of a bunch of misfits blagging rooms above pubs or beneath yeah. pubs in, in Pete's case at the King's Head. And and none of us, or we didn't know what we wanted. We just knew what we didn't want, and we didn't want that. We didn't want that that we saw on TV, or we didn't want that that we saw people doing or hear, heard people doing on radio. So, uh, so this, and then we'd see the next generation coming along, and they seem to be exclusively gearing themselves towards TV, or you know, grooming themselves for better things. And that that in our very adolescent way even though we're both in our 40s it felt that that was um not a pure my take on it anyway it wasn't a pure expression of the art and we wanted like it's just this idiot talking to those idiots about this that's what stand-up is right so that's what we were doing just two idiots taking the piss really yeah. um and then some people came along and they saw jerry was doing it and they realized they could make money out of it uh and then suddenly we found ourselves doing a tour and then we were at the edinburgh festival and then we were doing another tour then we're at the edinburgh festival again um and the so it was good fun but there was we'd sort of like we'd have you know massive breakups oh yeah yeah uh, and, and then things would it happen sounds, it sounds incredible i i i've seen jerry sadowitz many a time mm -hmm. at the edinburgh fringe i go to the edinburgh festival every year i'm very lucky to do so mm -hmm. and and if he's playing there i will go and see him yeah initially it's like the shock value of what he's going to do or say but once you once you're in that world the construction of his jokes yeah yeah delivery is yeah. just perfect he's one yeah. of the best comedians in britain yeah. i think i really do and also he's got uh i mean i'm slightly biased but he's got a real when he wants to or when he gets into that headset he's got a real despite what he's saying he's got a real charm yeah he's got like a like you say just draws you into his yeah. world very it's, much so yeah 
lovely yeah. to watch. Yeah, um, brilliant, wonderful. Um, let us move on because I want to talk about your uh, comedy courses that you run. Um, jo I've, I've written down joining forces with the Amused Moose Comedy Club. You created the Stand Up and Deliver comedy course. Your comedy course is still run today with lots of comedians such as Greg Davis and Rob Gilbert going on to greater things. Mm -hmm. What do you teach on the comedy course? And it must be very rewarding for you to do so. Yeah, it is. Uh, I've got to say, because uh, I've been doing it about 20 years now. Yeah. Um, what happened, again, Hugh Thomas. Hugh Thomas gave us a, a, a call. Um, and he said, we've had Tony Allen as a comedian in residence uh, uh, on our Middlesex Uni Performance Arts course, which is the thing I did all those years ago. Thinking, <laughs> thinking, Why are they singing Oklahoma? You know, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and they had, Hugh, got a, Hugh and another guy called Arthur Huss got a stand-up module going. And uh, Tony couldn't make it one year. So they said, do you want to be the comedian in residence? Um, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, and it... Uh, it sort of tied in a couple of years earlier, I got really ill um, with uh, an autoimmune complaint. Nobody could work out what it was, but I was, I was like, it's really, I mean, you know, oh, most people yeah. die of it. I had to learn to walk again and stuff like oh, that. Oh dear, man. And, um, but I'm, you know, hundred percent touch wood, hundred percent better for 30 yeah. years or so now. Um, and so I did a, I did a part-time MA uh, and I twisted oh. it all towards comedy. And I had some vague ideas, uh, which sort of crystallised a little bit doing the thesis. Um, but but it was just I just thought that the way academics talk about comedy is different from the way we experience comedy. And mm -hmm. uh, very arrogant thing to say, but I was just I felt I was like again a bit like alternative, alternative comedy. I I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew I didn't want that. You know, so. Um, so I did a few things. Uh, so they asked me to go back to university for a pittance because you get paid nothing in the academic world. Um, and then Hills Jago, uh, about two, three years later, she originally, um, she approached Hugh and Hugh uh, declined. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. And he said, but you might be interested in this. And, uh, uh, and um, so I went, uh, and uh, we, and he, you know, Hill supplied the venue. She did the admin. Um, he did the marketing for it. And we thought it was a one off. I thought, we, you know, I, and I might view at the time was, well, you can, you know, you can't teach people to be funny. You can, you can, you know, if you're funny, you're funny. You can maybe, you know, you can help the ones who have got funny bones and everyone else you can give them an experience or make them the public speaking less painful next time they do it and all that and um and the first course was brilliant i mean uh, you know, name dropping i won't name drop but there's loads of people on it who are in a much higher tax bracket than i am now and i've got to spend i forget how long that was but then most of the courses tend to be 10 weeks and they're right. usually three three hours in the evening um, might be slightly different than that first one, but I get to spend the time in this place with these people and just watch them light up and watch them go, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and find their own internal idiot and do this stuff. Um, and then we finish with the showcase at the end and they, uh, they do this thing. So, so I was working with Hills for about a long time, about I think maybe about 12 years. And then we had a massive falling out and um and i started doing it uh by myself now so uh well well done you yeah because, but, um there's yeah. there's there's two things i want to say i um uh um uh when i first started writing the blog um i went on a write a half day writing course and i'd never met her it was run by hills jago and um i went to the course and everybody around me wanted to be reviewers and um she she came to me and she said to me um we we forget why we invited you and i went and i mean you know charming as <laughs> and i went um well uh i'm not a reviewer i'm not a critique i'm not a reporter i'm not a diarist i'm a member of the audience how to have a good time 
and yeah. no, and never bothered me again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. thought, well, what a great answer that was. That's one yeah. thing. But the other one was, I wanted to thank you. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but one of the people that went through your comedy class was um, Fred Forenzi, Peter. Yeah, Pitt. yeah, yeah. Now I I worked. I, I used to be a civil service, yeah, uh, yeah. civil servant, and I worked with him twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. And and he's and, and I've known him for years, and um, he suddenly announced, "I want to be a stand-up comedian," <laughs> and so we go whenever we can, and we yeah. love it. And, he's and, and and I'm so pleased that this year he's back. He's been yeah. been as the character Fred, but he's also yeah. been himself. He's got yeah, yeah. the Edinburgh Fringe, which I hope but, he'll bring to London. But in Fred's in in, in Pete's Fred friends, Pete's yeah. uh, uh, defence. Um, he never had to deal with Hills Jago, so he, uh, <laughs> he signed up for. Um, She's and I've fine. Worked, I've, worked with, I've worked with loads of people all over the world. I mean, I do workshops in Shanghai. I've, I've, yeah, yeah. I've done them. I do them. I go to Greece two or three times a year. Do stuff in France. Uh, you know, work with loads and loads of different people, and it never felt like doing three rounds with Mike Tyson. What I, What I think is. She 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 commands herself like it's a business. Comedy is a business, and I I have a job that I go to at Wandsworth Council, which I've just got. That's my business. That's my job. The comedy is to relax and to enjoy and all the rest of it. As soon as this blog and podcast become a business mm -hmm. and the whole thing's not monetized at all, it's all free for people to look at and see, um, then I know that something will be wrong. And, 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 and I think the passion for doing it, I'll, I'll have forever more and, and yeah. not trying to find new comedians. Yeah. Um, but, but just but, to, just because I don't, you know, it's awful because you're, you know, I'm, I'm snipping from the sidelines here but it, you know in her defense yes of course uh, you know she's <laughs> what i have a think <laughs> there must be something <laughs> she's created a, a, she's created a brand well, she created an amazing she's, well, comedy she's, club yeah she's she's um she's uh it helped lots of oh, she has uh, new comics you know yeah, yeah. Uh, with stuff um in terms of giving the stage time and also much more importantly not much more importantly but as a work gigging comic she paid yeah. she paid it was like a really the amuse moose is a fantastic gig you know you did you did oh it is it's a, don't, don't, don't get me wrong yeah. she, she she invited me very kindly to the new act of the year the free yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I was in the audience for that Nee and Smith was the compare yeah yeah and Maisie Adam won it yeah. And, and Louise Atkinson, who I know very well, she yeah. she was on the bill. So yeah. was Josh Balf. Yeah, it, it, it was an extraordinary lineup. So she's very very good at what she does. Yeah, it was just the way she did it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, uh... but that's just her, you know. It's it's. But it's, uh, yeah, it's... Greg. Yeah, Greg. Greg Davis was always going. Why did you just leave her? <laughs> <laughs> and I was going. I was going. Well, and it's just and it's lazy. And the fact. She was a good administrator. She was really yeah, she, good at yeah, 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 all that. Yeah. But um, it, it, it was a very messy divorce. It really was. Um, but back to Fred, just a very brief Yes, indeed, he, yes. But back to Fred, he did a completely different thing. There's a lovely guy um, who's based in Tring in Hertfordshire called Ben Morehouse. Yeah. And he, he set up this thing called the Tringe Comedy Festival. That must be 12 years ago. And the, it, the, I, I moved out to Tring. Um, at, well, village near there. Yeah, and I saw yeah. these posters that said Tringe Comedy Festival. Underneath it said uh, the world's seventh longest comedy festival, and it just tickled me <laughs> that thing. So the first year went by, and the second year, Ben had this brilliant thing where the first night of the festival, he'd get like comics like I think Arthur Smith was always involved, but you get really? people like Silky, you know, Paul, yeah, Wayne, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think Josie Long's done it. Susan Murray's done it. Yeah. They get all these, and they would do this pub crawl where they do four gigs in four venues. So they be they, they do basically four slots, four thirty thirty minute self contained show. Move on to the next pub, do that, do that, and do that. And it was just a great way to to kick off. And everyone did the trench because yeah. just before Edinburgh, 
it was a yeah, massive yeah. audience. It was a proper gig, proper theatre, and it paid really well for a lot of the acts. So, um, so he said, "Do you want to?" When we met each other, he said, "You, you have a, you do this thing. Do you want to do it over here?" So we did it as a sort of a, a semi charity event. That's funny. And, uh, and and Fred was on the first. I think oh, Fred was on yeah. about the fourth. Yeah, but his baptism by fire was doing four first night uh, in front of crowd. He's doing four different shows in four different venues. It's, it's like wow. I don't can't think of anywhere else in the world where they do that. No. And, and and Ben's still running it. So, That's brilliant. Yeah, we we first saw him. I can't remember where, but top of the bill was Ashlyn B, and she was praising him. Yeah, and we saw him very recently at um, uh, the Angel Comedy with Paul Merrick. Yeah, I've yeah. Seen Paul Merrick before. Yeah, Paul's he lovely. He was wonderful. He was yeah. very funny man. Um, yeah, yeah. Who are your favourite comedians, past and present? Do you have any? You must have loads. Um, or is it too unfair to say because <laughs> you've brought so many up? Well, I don't, it's not. I mean, I'm very, I'm very fond of, I'm very fond of everybody that I've taught, whether they've gone on to, yeah. you know, bigger things or just given up after a couple of gigs. But I'm, I, I'm madly in awe. I mean, I did a, a workshop last night, and it was the first time they were trying out stuff wasn't even material yet stuff and um again it's that thing where you watch them light up and you go you know and some are slightly further down the line but Another they're all they, yeah, yeah. they're all getting it and because it, honestly anybody can do this it, it, you know it's not like learning to play the cello it, it it's it's something that human beings have been doing i reckon since as long as we've been talking yeah, you know, yeah. It, it yeah. has the same it comes out the same it's based on in my opinion anyway that's boring but it's something where human beings are really good at so it sounds really self-serving um or really meanie mouth rather when i say it um because sometimes in an interview i'm asked it and I, the short answer is whoever i'm working with at the time tend to be my comedy heroes yeah yeah you know? and the negative side of that is i've never liked somebody's material <laughs> goodness. I've never liked the material. No, it sounds awful, doesn't it? But I was thinking, like, everyone bangs on about how brilliant Bill Hicks is, and he is brilliant, brilliant, yeah, yeah. A great body of work. And, uh, you know, of, of its time, and even now, I think it probably stands the test of time. But he was, he did, you know, he did the show when he came out of the cowboy hat, and uh, he finished with the thing about, um, you know, the universe is just once, you know, the universe is us just discovering ourselves in the cosmos you know like altered states of consciousness and it finished on this massive bit uh loved that bit loved the the political stuff at the beginning but the middle bit of his set for his first hour show seemed to be just the stuff he was doing clubs in the in clubs in the midwest yeah. and it was like you know start with your best stuff finish with your best stuff don't worry about the stuff in the middle so so he's brilliant he's brilliant but i wouldn't say he's like anybody else is not a comedy hero because not because he did the crap bit in the middle and we got laughs and that but it was just um i know i know what you mean i mean i the, the people who it's showing my age but they you know we'd all watch monty python and then we yeah. go in school the next day and try and quote yeah like so there's no vcrs then so we just quote the lines as much west as we and make each other laugh you know and none of us went on to you know they this is a a comprehensive school in South Yorkshire. So none of them went on to do com I wasn't planning to do comedy. But that was a huge influence. And when I got older, Spike Milligan, same thing. Oh, gosh, yeah, so yeah. there was this this sort of anarchic thing going through. And th then there were some people who I think were quite anarchic of the time, but I didn't get that because I was too young and too stupid. So there'll be people who uh I mean, I always thought Les Dawson was fantastic. Oh, you were super low. Yeah, but there were other people like... Um, I only realised how brilliant they were uh, once they died. Or, yeah, or, yeah. or I yeah, regret yeah. it, you know. I mean, Frankie Howard did a whole series of gigs at um, Hackney Empire. Yeah. And I thought, I always thought, oh, I'll go next year. Of course, exactly. eventually there was no oh, next year. Exactly. There's a, there's a section in my blog called The Ones That Got Away. Yeah, and I've written twenty five of them, 
Yeah. And the ones I would love to have seen were more live were Markham and Wise. Yeah. I, I thought yeah. do that with the glasses, the perfect straight man, Eddie Braben mm -hmm. was the third mm -hmm. member of the team. It was extraordinary. That that run that they had. And yeah. I remember on um, Christmas night watching them with the whole family and yeah. everybody belly laughing and I thought this mm. this guy's hilarious and then from that I'd say um uh who else would have I'd put Dave Allen in there I always yeah, had a chance yeah, to go yeah. and see Dave Allen Bob Monkhouse yeah. another one um yeah. Frankie Howard Benny Hill Dick Emery yeah. I would have liked to have seen um uh, there's loads and loads and loads well there's 25 I've written about them but um uh, maybe one day. I mean, I love to go. I love to see plays about them, and yeah. they, they always do that at the front. And all the books behind me are all all comedy biographies and everything. Well, I, there's a lovely two hundred about Frankie. I've not seen it, but it's on. It keeps. The, it's been on at the Museum of Comedy. Oh, the, yeah, the, the um, two hundred with Frankie Howard and his. Uh, yeah, his it's the lover. same chap. I can't remember his name, but he he he, he played Bob Monkhouse at the front. Oh, right. It was extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It seems to enjoy playing these comic characters yeah and yeah. Uh, I've, I've 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 kept meaning a point to go and to to, to go and see that yeah. um <clears throat> excuse me like me do you go to a lot of comedy gigs as a member of the audience what do i yeah do you go um, and watch comedy as well as perform it and run comedy courses on it or is it too much well it, um I think I've always for the vast majority I mean the workshops have taken over my life so right. so I've gone from doing um four gigs a week to put you know bread and butter on the table yeah. to maybe you know including MC work maybe a gig a, a gig or a gig a month or two gigs a month yeah um but when i was doing four gigs a week and even to a lesser extent sort of now um I, unless it was the edinburgh festival which is a brilliant opportunity to go and see people and shows you wouldn't get a chance to see oh, yeah. I, I tended to think well i want a night off now you know, I, you know, if I if I'm playing, I don't if, blame if, you. If you're playing four, if you're playing four night, and it, Jeff, you've, you know, you're, you, you, I remember um, we were doing a mini, wasn't a tour, but we were we were doing a bunch of gigs with Jeff Green, uh, Noel James, and me going in a car. And we had a massive laugh, really brilliant time. The gigs were lovely. The the travelling around was um, an awful lot of fun. Um, and you think, brilliant, they're mates. And they, of course they are mates, but but it's not the same as having proper mates. And you don't, I'm going away from your question. And you, it becomes an ersatz yeah. social life, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's it's not the same as having a social life. You, But it ends up, like I suppose, like any job, and I am massively going away from your question here, is um, <laughs> you, end, but you end up, it's therapy for me, really. But you end up, uh, you, you know, like a, you end up, socializing with the people at work yeah yeah and, yeah and same same thing with us but but so on a night off if if i get a night off i'd rather i'd rather go to i'd rather do something that i wouldn't usually do like this week for example and this is this is this sounds really poncy but um because it is um but uh i went i went to see a counter tenor at the um at the wigmore hall in london good um, lad good yeah, man. yeah but i've never i've never been I've, I've never i didn't really arthur smith introduced a, a counter tenor in the early days of jonglers yeah so all i remembered with this guy with a really high voice and uh <laughs> but he, this is apparently the best counter tenor in the world and he's, wow. he was on with a really good lutist i thought well the thing is you get older you want to try doing new yeah, stuff yeah. you know yeah. so I, went, mm, I was persuaded to go yeah. And uh, and I, and I did. I'll be honest. I didn't like the counter tenor. I loved the lutist. So and I could appreciate the the tenor was fantastic, but it just wasn't. I mean, two hours of somebody going, "I'm sad, I'm sad." You know, so it wasn't quite for me. In Elizabethan tunes. Um, so that was Friday night. Uh, before that, I went to the Wallace Museum in London, which I'd never been to before. Wow. I lived in London thirty years. 
so that was like you know like that that book um the artist's way yeah yeah, 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 yeah. She, she had this that lovely idea in that take yourself on a date yeah, do yeah. things fresh you know feed your mind do things you wouldn't usually do so that was that was friday saturday there was a massive family event uh where we were watching somebody doing a four hour very interesting but very weird talk at the british museum take us around <laughs> exhi you know, exhibitions um and then what do we do yeah yeah so that was uh so that was the weekend and i was amazing. at the end of it you know um i'm 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 like you i mean i i i love to go to a comedy night and when i meet the comedians you're right. It is. It is a different sort of social, but it's a very happy social. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like to meet them. I like to get a photograph, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but I can't do. I can't go to a comedy night every night of the week. Mm. It would. It would kill us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you live or would you survive yeah. it? But uh, but but as I say, I love to go and 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 I'll support them forever more. You yeah, know, yeah. It's, it's, it's wonderful finding new. Um, talent and original yeah. comedians and it's 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 just a joy I mean, as, I mean, as, that, that, as, as has this into yeah. it's, it's been wonderful yeah. so what were you going to say I was going to say that thing you do at the Edinburgh Festival where you you promise you're going to go and see everyone's show because they're <laughs> made and then you just run out of time you know you, you know <laughs> I, I I have to have a spreadsheet I yeah. have a load of friends that come up and, and say yeah. this is what I'm going to go and see come yeah. and join me or they come and see yours, and then you think, "Oh no, <laughs> oh, no I'm really not making that way." Well, I well I tried to do because last few Edinburghs I've been up directing shows, and that's right. much more civilized, you know. Um, but uh, even then, what I try and do is make a point because there'll be loads of ex students who are doing shows up there now. Yeah, and um, if if they want me to come along, I, I you know, I'm really happy. That's to. so good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's delight to see. I mean, I've got nothing to, you know, they, all these people are funny before I get to work with them. And then you, but you just see them. It must be like some artist going, yeah, I taught Picasso how to hold the paintbrush. And then a few years later, going, yeah, he's doing this weird thing where these people get cubes and so And um, Guernica, I think he was on drugs. You know, all this sort of stuff. And it, so, so I'm just there. I'm a very, very lucky old man. Who's just there at the beginning of the right at the beginning of the journey, going no. about what's this? What's what's that about? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, listen, my friend, uh, your support for comedians is extraordinary, and you're a great comedian in your own right. And I'm Ooh. looking forward to coming to see you again very soon. I've so much enjoyed talking to you, and yeah. uh, thank you so it's much up. for your time. No, well, thanks very much, Richard. See, all, all, all the very best to you, and I'll see you again soon. Yeah, take care. Thanks now. Bye. Bye. Bye.